watch this video and I'll be right back. Have you ever read the slave Bible? Hmm. Watch this video and I'll be right back. Inside Washington's Museum of the Bible, a single volume that is like no other. The so-called Slave Bible. Remarkable not for what's in it, but for what's not. So about 90% of the Old Testament's been removed and about 50% of the New Testament's been removed. Uh, to put it another way, a normal King James Version has 1,189 chapters in it. Uh, the Slave Bible has only 232. Missing are chapters and verses that might have encouraged uprisings. Book of Exodus redacted. No story of Moses demanding Pharaoh, let my people go. Gone is Galatians, and the verse, There is neither bond nor free, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And no Jeremiah, woe unto him that useth his neighbor's service without wages. What they've left in are verses such as Ephesians 6.5, which is the famous verse, Slaves be obedient to your master. Looking at this Bible, it's hard to tell that anything's been taken out of it. That's correct. I mean, it looks like a normal book. For many enslaved Africans, this would have been the first time they were exposed to the Bible. A Bible selectively edited to instill obedience, using religion to underpin the horror of slavery. When people encounter this exhibit, what lasting impression do you want them to leave with? Well, we want to pass the message on that may this never happen again. Uh, the Bible itself is a, is a whole book. It's not one that you get to carve up and use this piece or that piece. The slave Bible designed to repress rebellion, but it didn't work. Enslaved people in the Caribbean constantly fought against slavery until emancipation. I think it's very relevant to understand our history. Not just American history, but our African American history, our roots and how we got to this point. A dark chapter in the history of the good book. Weird, huh? How they removed Bible verses and chapters and gave that redacted Bible to black people to let them think that it is in God's will for them to be slaves. There are many chapters and books that are missing from the Bibles that people have in their houses today. A lot of these chapters didn't make the cut when it was rewritten, I don't know how many times. The book of Enoch, the book of Esther, the book of Ruth, and so many others. It doesn't really matter where the original Bible was written because white people have culturally appropriated it, perverted it, and put passages and took out passages that helps them perpetuate their white supremacy ideology. At the end of the day, the Bible that is being sold and is read now in all these evangelical churches, it's not the original Bible. I mean, even the God that they're claiming to serve, not the original Christian God. Do some research. All right. Remember the diversity equal power. We can change the world when we work together and protect black women. Until next time. crazy huh like I always say I'm not here to tell people that there isn't a God everyone has the right to believe what they want to believe I just want to pinpoint what Christianity has done to the indigenous people of the planet how Christianity and colonization go hand in hand how white supremacy is synonymous to the religion of Christianity see spirituality comes from within not without. You will not find salvation on a pulpit or in a book. You have to go within and find your personal relationship with whatever God and goddesses that you want to find personal relationship with. But when a religion specifically colonize, steal, torture, enslave a people, that religion is flawed. Whatever entity these people believe in does not care about humanity. It enjoys chaos and destruction. The true Christian God does not. I'm telling y'all, something is off. And P.S. The way this sun is glowing my melanin right now. Are y'all seeing this? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to add that. <laughs> but yeah, y'all do some research.